Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the Commerce Lab by Comsi, the place for everything related to Amazon FBA Parallel and e-commerce. My name is Vincenzo Toscano, your host, founder and CEO of Ecomsi. And today we bring you another special guest. His name is Burak Yorga, and he's the co-founder of Forsaget, which is an amazing company when it comes to helping you with everything related to freight forwarding and much more, which we're going to be touching on today's episode. Uh, we're going to be talking about a series of topics, you know, a lot of things been happening in the space, especially we actually both met in first time in person at Amazon Accelerate. And Amazon did some interesting announcements, especially in the supply chain and freight forwarding space. So that's something I'm very interested to hear your take now that you're in. I mean, that's your focus as a business. And then, of course, we can also touch on some of the things people uh, can consider nowadays to, you know, be more efficient with shipping, some tips around Q4 uh, and so on. Yeah. So Perfect. it's a pleasure to have you on the show, Barack. So how you doing? Thank you so much, Vincenzo, to have me. Amazing. You know, uh, we did Alibaba event. We did Accelerate. Just came back. It's been two weeks, but after two weeks felt like four weeks. A lot of uh, to catch up, but really good times, you know, a lot of new um, innovation is coming by Amazon. I know. I know. Amazon actually was quite aggressive, I would say, at, at, at the event in terms of announcing a lot of things, especially, I would say, yeah, in, in, in the freight forwarding and, and, and the, basically the, the, the whole supply chain of things. They did a ton of announcements that was, wow, they're definitely going for the whole pie, like they're yeah. targeting all the different areas uh, within the Amazon space. So maybe, you know, we can start with that, about what has been your take about those announcements from Amazon Accelerate, what do you think? Do they re do you really think like they're gonna uh, keep the standards they mentioned? Which we know when Amazon announced a lot of new things, like they try to 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 shoot all the different things at once, but then the reality is some 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 of these programs don't end up working as they should. So yeah, what is your feeling? Huh? What do you think about this new announcement? Yeah. I agree. You know, uh, they they started to announce a lot of different things about the supply chain since last two years. Uh, mm -hmm. We talked about, um, you know, Amazon announced first, like Amazon Global Logistics from China to U.S., door to door. And then they start announcing AWD, which is uh, long-term storage. As we all know, after the pandemic, Amazon Fulfillment Centers became not a long-term storage, more like a fulfillment center. So now Amazon was thinking, okay, where are all these people going to store their products? So now we need, they, they start building giant fulfillment, mm -hmm. they, they start to build giant, warehouses where <laughs> you can long-term store that and they come up with this great idea in theory which a lot of issues happening with the in the actual real life the practice as you mentioned that yeah. uh, if you store your products in amazon long-term storage if your fulfillment center if your um, fba inventory quantity goes below certain quantity they will do automatic fulfillment so you don't need to worry about it but unfortunately, that doesn't happen in the real life the same way that they announce it because there are so many big pieces, actually, that they're trying to connect. But yeah. after they connect the big pieces, then there's so many other small details, which we're talking about, like, you know, millions of uh, cargo every day, like millions of pallets. They're trying to move around throughout the year and they store it, they label it, they ship it on time. And because the, the volume is so big, they do not have their own domestic trucks like Walmart has. Mm -hmm. They're using third-party service providers, mm. uh, such as like a really big uh, domestic carriers in the United States. And those companies, they have their own setup. So they're trying to match, oh, okay. trying to connect, you know, the from all the way, the, the announcement was, from all the way from manufacturer to the end user, the entire pipeline. Only take right then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, entire pipeline. But when you look at it, even on the screen, you're like, wow, there are like so many elements that they need to control. But when it comes to the real life and operation is one thing, plus customer relationship, another thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, one of the biggest issue with supply chain, Amazon Global Logistics or AWD, they are... Um, Customer service agents are not actually ever seeing the product. They never actually know where is the product. It's they a black box, basically. You put the request inside, they pick up the product, and then you hope it gets for destination. Yeah, I mean, they, they, like, you, they, they actually assign you an, an agent, but then when you ask, hey, what happened to this car? They're like, oh, let me open <laughs> exactly. it. So what's the reason to, you know, Amazon doing a lot of great things, but when it comes yeah, to the supply chain, I think they need a lot of time to, 
optimize things and stuff, but the real world changes way faster than you can actually implement something in the real life. So it's, it's, it's a lot of work, but, you know, companies like us who have already, you know, done the digitalization, um, you know, tracking, we, we kind of try to get, get into it, play the role. And um, mm-hmm. especially the second exciting topic was the global expansion. Exactly. That's, another thing, that's another thing that Amazon wants to talk about. Um, so global expansion, I think, will be the, the next big thing. Yeah. So can you tell me more about this cloud expansion? Um, so, you know, p- people can also learn more about what they can expect from this. So what is basically Amazon trying to do with this uh, new announcement also? You know, it's very interesting topic because uh, now Amazon becoming two years ago, even two, two like maybe, yeah, almost like two years, they start um, assigning um, account managers to the sellers, like brands. That's a big thing because... And in Accelerate, um, if people haven't been, it's a five-floor event. Yeah, and the top <laughs> floor, they had the, the one-on-one meetings with the Amazon Insight people. That's incredible because you have a problem with your catalog in the past. You open a case. If you're lucky, it gets resolved in two weeks. Yeah. Now you know people from Amazon. You can email them directly and ask them to help you with the troubleshooting. That's incredible. And, you know, that's like I think that thing a lot as a seller, sorry for interrupting, it makes the whole trip order because I imagine agree. now having that those emails for, you know, if, if something happened in your account and you're losing thousands of dollars because of a thing that is not yeah. resolving just by going there, like it, it's game changer. Absolutely. You're right. And the, the, the best part was um, another thing was like, a, you know, global expansion. Uh, we work with Amazon Canada directly when it comes to the global expansion. We are one of their mm-hmm. preferred partner for the international shipments and the U.S., Canada, truck shipments. So they refer us people. We refer them people. Uh, it was the same program. They start to, you know, create, like, new uh, programs such as FBM Worldwide. You can actually fulfill the product from the U.S. all the way to India, maybe, you know, all the way to Japan, all the way to U.K., Europe. Yeah. And or you want to ship something from, you know, U.S. to U.K., then yeah. you can speak to seller. You can speak to uh, account manager. So... Basically, Amazon is becoming more like a branded place versus you can go and buy a lot of cheap stuff and, you know, the quality is not good. I think they're changing the idea of the what the Amazon can give you, you know, the fast delivery, free returns, hassle-free shopping is great. But now they also want to do, okay, we want to make this a good experience too, like good yeah. buying experience. They already did that. But the products that we it will be sell products will be sold. They want it to be, you know, um, more specific, more quality. That's I think the great idea because now we see that you know the TikTok is coming to the market as mm-hmm. an e-commerce shopping. Uh, Timu, yeah. if people didn't hear about that, it's kind of Alibaba, sorry, AliExpress type of a, a Chinese uh, shopping, um, you know, a marketplace that where you can order things and things will be shipped from you know overseas, China. Vietnam, India, Turkey, to your directly. So now Amazon thinks that if there's so many new players are coming, what will be our position? So I think the Accelerate 2023 told us a lot of different strategy that it's all about like branding now. It's all about Mm -hmm. global expansion. If you have a good product, if you have a good branding, if you have a good positioning and a special niche, I think Amazon makes your life easier to expand globally and then sell in more marketplaces which, you know, you can leverage your buying power from uh, your, if you're a private label seller, if you're ordering from China 10,000 mm-hmm. uh, miles a month, that a, a year, you could now add up, you know, Japan, UK, Canada, and then you can order 15,000 units maybe. And then your purchase price can go down because your quantity increase. So this also helps sellers. So many people, they think that I was extra revenue. But it's also extra profit, uh, which, you know, we talk about it 2023 is the most important yeah. year for the profitability. Of course. Now, uh, let's bring to the table, you know, how guys like you guys are first to get uh, basically differentiate from what Amazon offers and bring to the table. I think something that is unique from what you guys bring to the table is that one-to-one approach that you will never get from Amazon, right? Is that yes, relationship, absolutely. is that is that thing that you get a, a tailored solution to your business? Uh, and maybe, you know, you can also highlight what are some of the benefits of working with guys like you compared to 
the solu- some of these solutions Amazon is bringing to the space because I think sometimes it's, you know, it's important to m- make the highlights. Sometimes people think that a decision is just as easy as only sometimes focusing on pricing, but I feel it goes deeper than that and, and decisions like this can be game changer for your business. So maybe you can tell me more about, you know, what are some of the, the benefits of, of, you know, working with a company like yours, for example. Yeah. You know, things, things change sometimes every day. You know, one mm-hmm. day we wake up and Amazon changed the inventory limits. Another yeah. day... You wake up and your you know supplier has a short material shortage and sorry raw material shortage and then they delay your uh, production for like two weeks or yeah. you know there's a, a an environmental condition you know we see that so many things are happening in the Suez Channel or you know Panama Channel that your shipment delays two three weeks or there's a strike at the destination so you kind of need to be ready for all these challenges and now uh, we've been. You know, uh, you know, people who have been receiving so many challenges recently and they have a lot of problems with their supply chain, international logistic sourcing. And all these problems are causing at the end the cash flow issue. And, you know, in order to be a successful business, you need to have a healthy cash flow. You don't have to make so much profit, but if you have a very or you're making a lot of profit, but you don't have a healthy cash flow then you can go to bankrupt, which, you know, the last thing that a business owner would like to experience. But so many people are having this issue because compared to two, three years ago, the, you know, all the supply chain time went from three months to, let's say, five months because of the production mm-hmm. delay, shipping delay, fulfillment delay. And, you know, Amazon also has a shortage in the, you know, the warehouse workers, which they're hiring seasonal uh, employees, mm-hmm. almost 50,000 people in the, in the U.S., in, which oh. is a good sign with they're expecting a high mm-hmm. you know buying um, attitude from the from the shoppers is a great thing but the sellers are having an issue with all this kind of issue so companies like us you, you know we, when you wake up you have a less limit you don't know where your container can go and we're like okay let's have the transload option let's do store half of them deliver the half of them in here they're like hey do you have a do you have a do you have an account in Canada? Maybe we can open an account, help you to open an account in Canada so you can ship it to Canada. So we kind of help people to, you know, we have a lot of experience every day. We are having different type of challenges from our mm-hmm. different clients and we talk to them. So it's kind of, we have a, you know, the problem pool and then we kind of pull up the solution uh, from that pool to help people. So I think people should have absolutely a one-on-one relationship with their freight forwarders. That's like the most important thing, you know, up to two, three years ago, nobody really talked about supply chain, mm-hmm. nobody talked about freight forwarders. I'm like, yes, it's our time right now to talk about, especially, yeah. after, uh, especially after Amazon also announced the supply chain, which you can see in the, the core of the event was about supply chain. It's all about the profitability and that's what the brands started to look at it. I mean, you guys are having an incredible agency that you deal with a lot of clients, you do a mm-hmm. lot of phone calls. To the you know the the demo we are the same and the first thing they started to, to ask about us is the timing not about exactly. the freight prices mm-hmm. they're like how can we shorten the time how can we yeah. get paid how can we get paid faster by the Amazon yeah cash flow is king I mean if you don't have the cash flow because you're lacking the control of on your on your non the supply chain but how fast you you uh, turn around inventory i mean that's Absolutely. game changer especially in in the amazon space and, and you know this like if you go out of stock or you lose sales velocity it, it's a killer so that's yeah. why i feel uh, and that's actually good that people shift in the mentality that it's not anymore about how much it costs it's about time time is money at the end of the day and that's why you see sometimes and i have clients already that they're doing that they're moving the supply chain from, let's say, China to Mexico because Mexico, it could be more expensive to manufacture. But guess what? You basically remove those sometimes 45 days of shipping by sea from China. Now you have it in Mexico just by a truck to the yeah. U.S., right? So yes. I guess I, I'm sure you are seeing this as well. It, it's shifting the mentality, you know? Right. So. It's, it's right. And also there are, you know, so many um, issues with the economy circumstances or even like politics which you know mm-hmm. we, we're not here to talk about politics but yeah. it's eventually affecting the tariffs the duties exactly. um, you know a lot of lot of factories um manufacturers in china they also started to 
you know, manufacture products in Malaysia, Vietnam, exactly. or mm -hmm. there are a lot of companies from US, they're going back to China again because of the cost efficiency. <laughs> yeah. you know, there is yeah. no inflation in China. It's opposite the inflation. It means exactly. that the prices are actually going down because of the, you know, uh, the, the low demand in the domestic market. Exactly. So there's you, a lot of factories basically with empty floor, like not yes, product to yes. manufacture. <laughs> which, is, which, is, which is crazy and really sad because I lived in China eight years. And at the time I was I lived in China, China economy was booming. Like, you know, in some point I had a sourcing company back then. And I in some point I had to choose the customers. Like I didn't have time to reply yeah. all my customers. It was a great time. Now it's a different time, but now it's a different game. And it's all about like, you know, companies need to become more like a company. You know, if you're an Amazon seller, you need to be part of a community. You need to start creating a better structure within the company. You maybe need to hire an, a, a marketing agency or you need to maybe set up your own marketing team, you know, start from the small, uh, you know, try to find the profitable products. We had a client that they are selling um, a they're selling a screen, like a, a, a curtain screen uh, okay. for the projectors. And they sell this product in the US, like almost a full container per month. And they launched in Japan. They're selling three containers per month in Japan yeah. because of the, the cultural issues. But you cannot sell a mini air fryer in Japan <laughs> because they don't have a space to do it. So exactly. not every, not the, your existing product may not be selling in a different marketplace, but you can always look for an opportunity, try to go to the markets that it's not that uh, hard to enter. You know, there are so yeah. many markets now. And Amazon makes that very interesting. You know, we talk about expanding to Brazil, you know. Mm. And, you know, it's crazy. Like, actually, another thing is now Amazon is even helping you with AI translation. Yeah, for, yeah now it's that. <laughs> That's crazy because... There's so many like translation agents in the world, and then they're like, "Oh, you know what? You don't need that anymore. You can translate it in one day." Obviously, I'm not saying use yeah. only that; it's 100% accurate. But yeah, you still have to go in and, and do the manual side of things, but yes. it removes a lot of the bulk. You know, the bulk work. So it's game but it is it is something. So that's why Amazon really wants you to expand globally. I think if you're not selling in a different marketplace like Walmart, Etsy, Kroger, you should. Try to look for an expansion to another marketplace. Australia is a great market, you know, uh, high income country. Maybe you're not going to sell that many quantities, but CPC is lower. So yeah. competition is lower. You may be making more actually profit in, in Australia. You know, yeah. so if, in fact, that's, that's a very important thing. Like we have to understand and we need to shift the mentality that selling on, um, on Amazon is all about, you know, the seven and eight figures and plus. I mean, I know people, they don't do seven figures, but they do more profit that some of the accounts I have seen when doing audits that do seven, eight figures, you know? Mm -hmm. It's all about, as you say, and that's why the core focus on, to, on this year has been profit because I feel, mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes focusing only on revenue and I'm pretty sure you see that with your clients, it doesn't mean you're profitable. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> It's, it's just important, you know, to understand the, the whole game, like not like yeah. only, you know, you need to you need to widen your world. You need to open your eyes. And Amazon is helping you with this. So I think that's the greatest part right now in the business. Awesome. Now, uh, let's also bring to the table, you know, the the the, the conversation of international uh, shipping. Right. So we know things being very uh, dynamic in this space, especially when COVID prices went up, then it went down, stabilized. Now I want to hear what is your your update on what is happening right now in this space and what I mean uh, by this, like, do you have any projections in terms of if prices are going to stay low as they are right now? Is there any any kind of theory there that prices are going to go up again? Like, what what, are, what is the current status of international shipping so people can be aware in 2023 in September what is happening? Yep. You know, um, right now the prices are still low, but uh, the shipping lines canceling a lot of space to increase mm. the price a little bit. Yeah, that's the thing okay. because they don't want the ship, um, they don't want to, you know, depart a, a container vessel is empty. Half empty. So it's it's a lot of cost for them. So that's why it's because of the actually the you know the demand and supply. If the demand in the yeah. U.S. market, let's say, if it is high enough, then there will be more scheduled vessel. There will be more. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there will be higher prices and then demand yeah. is not that high. So that's why, you know, we, we see a lot of uh, different uh, surveys where people 
where the business owners are expecting not a big jump. And, you know, and, you know, interest rates are very high right now. So people don't want to use their credit cards that much because it's kind of harder to pay off. You know, a lot of people in the U.S., they live bill to bill. And that's like a, a, a problem right now where, you know, we have a high inflation in the, in the United States yeah. and the rest of the world is as well. And the Fed is still increasing the interest rate. So these are like all like a snowball effect. Um, and it's causing, you know, the uh, weak demand in the market. So that's why the international shipping prices are not uh, increasing. But this is causing them, you know, uh, cash flow issues because then, you know, if you book something, it, instead of departing this week, it can depart in 10 days, two weeks. Yeah. So that's why if you work with like Amazon Global Louis 6 only, they're not going to share you any, um, mm -hmm. you know, a schedule, like firm time, departure, yeah. rider. So you need to work with a freight forwarder who can help you with exact booking, immediate booking, and, you know, help you to track the shipments. And, you know, you can adjust your PPC budget or you can adjust your... Uh, Amazon listings and activate or deactivate the coupon because if you don't know when your product's going to arrive and check into Amazon FBA, then you basically are making blind decisions. And if your competitors are not doing blind decisions, it means that you're going to stay behind the competition. So that's why it's extremely important to speak to an expert. It's extremely important to talk to the freight forwarders who are, you know, uh, more in the niche that, you know, who has the license, who has the experience with Amazon and more importantly, they need to have an um, in the existing in the destination market because everything can change. We have so many yeah. containers rejected by the Amazon fulfillment centers without any good reason. They're like, it's busy, come back, do this, do that. And then, you know, these are something that cannot be uh, planned or projected. So you need to react extremely fast. Other one, otherwise, if the container... Uh, stays in the trucker's yard, you can get maybe three hundred to four hundred dollar extra charge. Yeah. By the time you write to your freight forward, they wake up, you make decision three days pass, and that could cause you like yeah. one thousand two hundred, one thousand five hundred dollar. And this doesn't mean that international shipping is cheap. You need to understand that the last mile delivery and the final delivery is the most important thing right now, actually. Now, the, the nice thing of also working with guys like you is that, you know, because you see so many different cases and you work with in so many different locations that over time, I'm sure you have identified like a efficient patterns in terms of how to ship certain products, in terms of the quantity, in terms of the location, etc. And what I'm trying to get with this is that Q4 is coming. And I'm sure with your experience being in the space for so many years now, there are some things that, you know, you have like a in terms of these are my my most things to do when it comes to Q4, right? Uh, I know we are pretty much in October, so you know yeah. shipment should be basically going out by next week, yeah. mid of October. So I wanted to hear your take. Like, what do you expect this uh, Q4 to happen in terms of potential delays, and also like when people should be shipping latest, and maybe some advice you can give in terms of how to you know, be as efficient as possible when it comes to cost when shipping in Q4. Yeah? You know, the most important thing we're expecting delays on the Amazon check-in process time. Mm. Um, you know, not with international shippings and deliveries, but, you know, when you deliver products to Amazon FBA, they also distribute the products within 40 to 45 separate fulfillment centers. And this is causing a lot of delays for the check-in process. A lot of people, it's actually funny that a lot of sellers, they think that, oh, my shipment is delivered. Why it didn't check in? They're like, oh, okay. you guys didn't deliver it? I don't believe you. You guys didn't deliver it. You lost my cargo. We're like, no, you need to wait. Because Amazon sometimes, it takes one or two weeks just to scan the barcode. Yeah, it's just sitting there on a corner. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're sitting. They're sitting. But imagine they're like 50 truck brings the products in. They check in. The robots take them to the shelf. They distribute it. They repellet it. It's just crazy process. And a lot of people don't understand that. So that's why, you know, it's very interesting that we hear this a lot. And, you know, one thing that you need to understand what will be the check-in time of the Amazon. So if you don't understand that process, you're going to run out of inventory for sure. So yeah. don't wait until the next day. And then another thing is FBA fees increase a lot in the fourth mm -hmm. quarter. They, look, they go up five times. So you should have a 3PL partner where you can store your products in California. Super important. Yeah ship it to Amazon very frequently. Otherwise, you might be eating your profit. A lot of people, they don't understand that. It's just like, it's crazy. 
Yeah, super important that thing uh, yeah. right there because I feel when people calculate lead times, they assume and I agree with you. They 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 never um really calculate the time. You know, the robot and the scanning and everything, which is usually ten to fourteen days, and that's because we when we do audits, we find that a lot like people losing positioning because they've been doing that mistake over and over again, and then you know. Now Amazon, also, now Amazon is also <laughs> charging. Now Amazon is also charging uh, long-term storage fee in the FBA. That's why they're like, we don't want you to keep it. They start increasing their rates, rates maybe like three times more. So yeah. you got to be like super careful about that, you know? Yeah. Have you seen as well, um, and maybe you can comment about what you think about the solution, which is not new. It's, it, it was announced this year where customers can buy inventory space within Amazon. I, don't know I mean, that's what they're doing that. I think that's also that's also tricky. Yeah. Uh, you know, I kind of don't want to comment on that too much because, uh, in my opinion, that's not. I don't know. What it's a gamble. Want. It's a gamble in some sense because you're basically yeah. saying if you're gonna sell it, then they charge yes. you. You know, yes. so and it's I, you know it's kind of like not that ethical in my opinion yeah. <laughs> because you know you're kind of charging them and you know it's just like a little yeah. tricky. You gotta understand very careful, and if you're not sure, don't do it. Also, exactly. like, you know, it's also okay to play safe. You don't, and then a lot of people they get, you know, we had a call yesterday uh, with, the, with, a, with a potential client. They are mm -hmm. selling like a car accessories, like, you know, a lot of different parts, lights and stuff, like for the SUVs. Think about this program. They had the list of the programs. They asked us about six, seven different, and they're like, mm -hmm. we don't know which one you want to start with. I'm like, don't start with anything. Just optimize your FBA search, optimize your size. Another thing, Vincenzo, People don't understand how important the Amazon FP fee layers. They have different type of layers. So like depending on the product size, they charge you uh, different money. So you can okay. start looking at your competitors, how much they're paying. So instead of going into something new, a lot of people, they don't even go through your, their own listing. They don't go through their own FPA fees. They don't go through any of those things. And they're suddenly, oh, we want to try new three, three new things. They're, oh, our sales increased, but we're losing more money. How is it possible? Because exactly. if you don't optimize your fees, if you can start selling more, but it means that you're going to lose more money on the fees that you don't check out. So you definitely look at your first optimizing and do some audit, you know, um, work with companies like yours to get the audit. And we also offer free HTS code audit, yeah. which is like an import uh, record that when you, you might be paying like a, a lot of extra money that you have. I think no alone idea. is an amazing TV. I explained. Yeah. So, <laughs> so like, you know, the import tax is very important. You know, yeah. we had a customer, they import um, doormats and turns out they're paying 25% instead of 3.3%. So we find it out. And they import two containers per month and each container worth of $50,000. So at the end of each month, we start saving them $22,000. And, you know, it just, 10,000 units in it, it makes it 22 cents. And, you know, their selling price already $8.99. So imagine they're saving like 77, almost 7% 7 of their selling price from the duty. And yeah. when you look at from the gross profit, that's even more because after FBA fees, they're actually making $3 each unit. So they are saving like more than 10%. So there's so many things to dive into, so many things to look into. But again, I think, the best thing to do is, uh, you know, I, I have I have my pen and pen, pen and pencil. I write down the things, the checkpoints, and start looking at that. That's the best thing you can do for the fourth quarter: saving money, especially the FPA fees. Like, sit down and study about the FPA fees. Awesome, awesome, very good. So, you know, thank you very much for being on the show. I mean, you know, the amount of knowledge you shared today is definitely going to help a ton of people, as always. And, you know, Thanks. before we conclude, I want to ask you if you can also share with us, like, you know, how people can get enriched with you and your team. So if they right. have more questions about your services, if they need support. So, you know, we can put that into the notes as well of the episode. Yeah, We do. We, we have free consultancy call, 15 to 30 minutes to give people, like, you know, understanding better, um, you know, what they should be going through. Like all the checklists, we can go with more details. So they can send an email at sales at forescap.com. I personally check those emails and, you know, have the call and then assign them the right person. So that's the best way to send us an email and we get back to them within two hours, not like two weeks. 
<laughs> That's good, Barack. So thank you very much. And, you know, looking forward to see you soon uh, future events. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon, man. Take care. Have a nice one, bro. Thank you.